Imagine you're sitting on the side of the road. You see all these cars going by. Some trucks, some cars, some SUVs, some vans. All shapes, all different sizes, all different colors. And you're just sitting there watching them as they drive by. Some a little bit faster, some a little bit slower. And then imagine you're sitting on the side of the road and you see a car that you are interested in. You may not necessarily like it or dislike it, but you get curious about it. So you get up and you try to chase the car, almost like a dog. And then you see a car driving the opposite direction and you like the color of that one. So all of a sudden you try to chase that one. And then you see a car coming in another direction and you say, oh man, I, I really like that SUV. And you go and chase that one. That's the way our mind races around with our thoughts. So instead of us chasing cars, in reality, our mind is chasing different thoughts every single day. I'm here at a high school field, just finishing up a workout. And it's an interesting thing to calm the inner voice. And there's a lot of work, there's a lot of practice that can go into calming this inner voice. I just wanna hopefully share with you in a couple of minutes here, how you can start to silence that inner critic. You know, if this is the first time you're watching one of my videos, I help athletes on the mental side of sports. You know, I've been privileged to work with athletes in over 20 different sports now. You know, recently I was working with a rower and you know, rowing, you're, you're basically going balls to the wall if you've never been rowing or anything like that before. One of the main metrics, one of the main ways they measure a rower is what's called their 2K time. You basically go balls to the wall for about six minutes straight, six minutes and some change. And every second matters, just like every other sport. Every second matters. So if you have this inner dialogue, if you have this inner critic that leads you off track for just a couple of seconds during your 2K time or whatever your sport is or whatever you do, whatever your work is, whatever your conversation is, if you have this inner dialogue, this inner voice that leads you astray, like chasing that car, chasing that SUV or chasing that truck, it can derail the whole conversation. It can derail your whole performance. It can derail your whole relationship sometimes. So how do you calm that inner voice? And, you know, some studies say we have over 20,000 thoughts per day. Some say 40,000 thoughts per day. One of the things I do with athletes is I, I'll set a timer for literally 60 seconds. And I said, okay, we're going we're gonna to concentrate right now for 60 seconds on one thing. And I usually make it about the breath. Say, okay, focus on your breathing for 60 seconds. And when you intentionally try to focus on just your breathing for 60 seconds, 99% of the time, people report back and say, oh man, my mind wandered five times, 10 times, 20 times, to all of these different things. So how do you combat that? How do you make sure that you're focused on the right thing? Because focus and keeping that inner dialogue focused on the right task, keeping the pictures in your mind focused on the right task, keeping your actions focused on the right task is really the key to success. If we boil it down, I know that's an oversimplification. There's you know, a lot of other details and a lot of other variables that go into it, but big picture wise, that's you know, the three main ingredients. So to calm the inner voice, there's a little bit of wind going on here. Hopefully the audio is decent. There was no breeze when I was working out. That would have been nice, but it is what it is sometimes. So to calm the inner voice, to calm the inner dialogue, there's a ton of different techniques in terms of, you know, having a keyword that you come back to or having, you know, a visual that you can come back to that reminds you of something to say. So, you know, one of the techniques is called a controlled distraction. So if you're an athlete watching this, you can use this in school, you can use this at work, is having an anchor, having something that you see on a consistent basis. Take this field, for example, right? I see the goalposts or I see, you know, there's some old rundown bleachers over there or there's a, there's a trash can over there. It doesn't matter what the visual is. You pick the visual, but it's something that always has to be there. 
and you anchor a specific focus to that thing. So, you know, if I'm out here working out and I'm on the track and I'm running and I notice my mind's wandering all over the place, I literally, I know the only time I look at that goalpost or that trash can or those bleachers, my focus should be on one thing. So maybe in this case, it's breathe. So uh, I'm on the track, I'm doing some sprint work, or I'm doing some running and it's like my mind's going here, my mind's going there, my mind's going there. Sometimes it's, you know, beating myself up. Sometimes it's positive thoughts. Sometimes it's about, you know, what happened last week. Sometimes it's about something that's gonna happen in the future. Our mind, that's the nature of our mind is just to wonder. So, having a controlled distraction is a way to intentionally bring a specific focus to your mind. Let me get out of the wind here for just a minute. Having a controlled distraction like the goalpost, when you intentionally set it, is a way to bring your focus back to maybe a phrase, maybe a key word, maybe an intention, maybe you know something specific that you wanna focus on. Having that keyword and setting it intentionally for some, you know, for some outside stimulus. So the outside stimulus in this case is something visual. It's the goalpost or it's the bleachers or it's the trash can. So I come to the field. I know I've got my workout and I have something that I need to focus on during that workout, say my breath. So I get to the field. I set my control distraction. I say, okay, the goalpost. Anytime I look at the goalpost, it's going to remind me to focus on breathing. So I start my workout and then just by the nature of my mind, 30 seconds in, a minute in, two minutes in, my mind's going all over the place. And it's like, okay, boom, I got, I got the goalpost right there, control distraction. It brings me back to what I need to focus on. It's an anchor to bring you back to something specific. Now, the thing that you focus on, the thing that you anchor yourself to could be anything. It could be, be aggressive. It could be push yourself. It could be, uh, take it easy. It could be, you know, whatever your specific need is. You've got to set that. You've got to be intentional about what you need. But it's about picking something that you can see that's going to anchor you back to something, a keyword or a phrase or a reminder that is intentionally going to help you for that workout or for that test or for that performance or for that day. You know, I can have one in my office and... You know, we have these, we have a lot of these controlled distractions. We have a lot of these anchors that we set unintentionally. Think about a song that you like, you know, that's something that you hear. Think about a song that you like that brings you a certain feeling, maybe joy, maybe sadness, maybe happiness. Think about, you know, you show up to a, a specific field or you show up to a specific house or you show up to a specific place it brings back those memories of that specific thing. That's because it got anchored into your brain and into your nervous system. This is doing it intentionally. So obviously we could go a lot deeper on this. And if you'd like to do that, if you're an athlete, definitely check out the description below. I work with athletes one-on-one -on -one. or just hit that thumbs up button and subscribe to my channel. We'll be throwing out some more videos on the mental side of sports. So if you enjoyed this video, either way, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, all that good stuff. And we'll see you on the next one.